Get the cheese to sick bay. The doctor should look at it as soon as possible. Welcome back to the shipyard and another episode of Get the Cheese to Sick Bay. Today, we're going to start looking at the Vulcan faction. We're going to start with ships. Vulcans only have two classes of ships, and that right there is something that needs to be fixed. The Vulcans need at least a third class of ship. Maybe not as desperately as Ferengi, but they need something besides a Dakir and the Serac. Now, the Dakir class is a pretty good class. 3154, 180 arc, and a maneuver dial that's pretty reminiscent of the Excelsior class. It's not bad right there. It just doesn't benefit from everything that Federation has to make it fantastic. And that alone is holding them back just a little bit. The named Dakir says when you initiate an attack against an enemy ship at range 3, gain plus 1 attack die. It's not bad. It's a reasonable ability. But it needs passive quality. Either some form of a conversion, a reroll, just that little bit extra. Because range 3 is so limited. Maybe even make it conditional. Say something like, if you are not in their firing arc, you may also re-roll one attack die. That would be reasonable to me. The ship gets one crew, one weapon, two tech. That's fine. Giving it a second crew slot would be nice. I think that would help, but uh, it's not entirely necessary. All right, our next deck here, the Saleya. It goes one crew, two weapon, one tech. I'm not a huge fan of the second weapon slot. Take it for what it is. Uh, when defending, if you have a scan token beside your ship, roll plus one defense die. I get it, but how about set a defense die? That way you're not adding results, because then on that ship, scan would be better than evade, and why bother taking evade? But set a die. That's reducing your die pool, but at least you're getting an evade result out of it. That to me is reasonable. That's a good named ability. That would make it better. The Talkir. Two crew, finally. One weapon, one tech. Probably the best slot load there. Each time you defend, during the modified defense dice step of the combat phase, you may add one evade result to your roll. If you do so, place one auxiliary power token beside your ship. I'm a big fan of the ability. I don't think this one needs to change. Other things could be done to add to it, but uh, as it is... It's good, I don't think it needs to change. Now, our other ship class is the Surak class. They go for 20 points named, 18 generic. Named ships are 2143. They also have 180 arcs. Slightly better maneuver dials, they're more like constitution classes. They have two white turns, three red turns. That might make them more like uh, Miranda class ships, but. Eh, I digress. And there's two of them. Uh, the Nevar gets two crew, one tech, no weapons. When you attack an enemy ship at range three with your primary weapon, if there's a scan token beside your ship, you gain plus one attack die for that attack. So this is kind of like the Dakir, except you also have to have a scan. It's such a conditional ability. It falls apart. If you're stuck on the notion of needing range 3, then give them the plus 1 attack die, period. And then say if you have a scan, get a reroll, get another die on top of it, get a conversion, something like that to make it work better. The Enterprise A is the best example of an ability like this working. If you have a scan token, get plus 1 attack die, period and more. So conditional scan shouldn't be a thing. The other named ship is the Tamur. It has the flip slots, one crew, two tech. When you initiate an attack, you may disable one of your non-disabled tech upgrades to add plus one attack die. Here's what I would have liked to have seen instead. 
you may add plus one attack die for each of your non-disabled tech upgrades. That rewards you for building a specific way. Put a max on this, max of two, so that it doesn't get crazy with bonus slots and stuff. Then you're good. Maybe make it take an ox, and then limit it to once per turn, so that you can't cheese the heck out of it. But, even if you could, it wouldn't break the game. Not in any way, shape, or form. So, all of these Vulcan name ships need just a little bit of TLC, and they would be so much better than they are. Alright, our one Vulcan Admiral is Vloss. He is a plus one skill Admiral, and for a fleet action, you target a ship at range one to two, disable one crew upgrade of your choice on the target ship. Problem here, of course, is you spend your action, they spend their action, zero-sum game. Maybe you've denied their action, but that's not why you take this card. That's not why you do the action. Again, this needs to have language, like add a disable and a time token, something like that. And it's a simple fix, but it's the fix that needs to be in place to make these abilities actually matter for the round in which they're performed. Or just make him time tokens, period. Target a ship, place three time tokens on the crew, two time tokens on the crew. Probably three for an action. All right, our other captains. We have Vanek. Uh, he's skill five with a talent slot. He'll cost you three points. All of your Vulcan and Federation tech upgrades are minus two. It's a good ability. Uh, what I'd like to see is him add a tech slot. It's a reasonable addition. Makes him work better. And then maybe you get minus six out of him. And that's even better than the minus four that he's going to get as is. He would also then work on ships that only have one native tech slot, or even zero, if you want to put him on some fed ships. And that would make him more valuable than what he is right now. So, simple fix, and a nice addition to him. Then we have Tavin. At any time, really means between phases, you may replace one evade scanner battle station token beside your ship for one evade scanner battle station token. If you do so, place an ox power token beside your ship for a four skill captain with a talent slot costing you three points. I don't think he needs the ox power token, since he doesn't truly work at any time. Just being able to swap tokens, while powerful, is not so ridiculously powerful that you need to punish people for doing it. And I think that Tavin would be just fine being a four-skill captain to just do what he does and work. Something to consider. A Tavek, three-skill captain, two points, add one crew upgrade slot to your upgrade bar. I would like to see him get a little bit of bounty kirk. All of your Vulcan crew cost minus one SP. Simple discount but a great little fix to incentivize you to run some Vulcan crew, and a nice little reward. To me, that's a win-win. Next, we have Soval Action. Target a ship within range 1 to 2. Remove one scan or battle station token from beside the target ship. Place an ox power token beside your ship. I'm fine taking an ox if I can also give them an ox when I remove their token. I think it's that simple. I want equal ox power. So either we both get it, or nobody gets it. Simple fix for Soval. I would rather have both happen. Moving on, we have Sopek. Add one crew upgrade slot to your upgrade bar. Action, choose one of your crew upgrades that was discarded from your ship on a previous round. Redeploy that crew upgrade to your ship, and place an ox power token beside your ship. Love the ability. He works great. Uh, he's fallen out of favor a little bit, but he still does good work. Next up, we have Solok. You may perform an evade or a scan action as a free action each round. If you do so, place an ox power token beside your ship. Easy fix. Get rid of the ox power token. I know Vulcans have a lot of ways to get rid of ox power, but he should be a free action captain. Not a free action. And an ox power. Like, just free action. We're good. Uh, if you insist on 
maintaining an aux power theme, then say, if the action you choose is not on your action bar, take an aux power. But if it is, then you're good. And by your action bar, I mean the ship's action bar. Captains don't have action bars. That's silly. Our last captain, Kuvak. After you move, if you perform an evade action, you may place two evade tokens beside your ship instead of one. If your ship is not in the forward firing arc of any enemy ships. It's a nice little passive ability. It's not very good. I would prefer him to say uh, you can place two instead of one if your ship is in the firing arc of two or more enemy ships, because that's when you need a lot of evade tokens. You may not get attacked by those ships, but you should have the evade tokens to make it work. So I'm going to call it there. We're going to save all the upgrades for next time. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time, we'll see you around the shipyard. Take care.